Welcome to uh, the special meeting for Board of Selectmen. For, it's Friday, September 28th. It's 11 a.m. This meeting is being recorded. Um, I'm going to start off with Pledge of Allegiance. Mark, would you lead us, please? Sure. Brian Gordon, by the way, is on the phone. You there, Brian? Yes, sir. Okay, pledge is starting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And again, I'd like to thank the flexibility of these other selectmen. <laughs> um, you know, we've got fast-moving stuff, and uh, some of it's small, some of it's big. This is uh, fairly small, but big consequences. The first issue we have is discussion, decision, authorized for selectmen to sign a master municipal agreement with the state of Connecticut Department of Transportation. We did this, I think, last year or the year before, a version of it for uh, rights of way. Rights of way. Um, what happens is the state came up with this plan that because there's a lot of legal uh, machinations that need to be done for any of these large pro projects that involve municipalities and the state, they decided to streamline the process and create this overarching sort of structure where they would basically handle everything and form, create a formulaic uh, method for getting it all done. And in the end, it would save everybody a lot of money in terms of drafting, editing, revisions, all that sort of stuff. The good, that's the good part about it. The bad part about it is it's a take it or leave it situation. Um, they do not allow you to go back and negotiate it. Um, they do not allow you to play, play around with it. They say either you want this or you don't. If you want it, it's going to make your life easier. But there are some pitfalls to it, um, so, some things that we might have to look at, at enhanced insurance. Um, this one in particular is the construction agreement. Yeah, this is, this is for, um, for preliminary engineering projects, which is what we're, um, so, what we're getting into right now. Getting into, we already have an agreement with the engineer. Uh, Wengel WNC is the name. It was reached before I arrived. This is the Cavalry Road Bridge? Yeah, this is for three bridges. This is for um, Cavalry Road um, and Joan, Jones. Um, uh, the other two escaped. Cavalry Road is a replacement. Is it the Valley Forge Bridge? There are, um, they'll hit me in a second, the other two. They're both over the saga time. River Road. River Road and Jones. Is Jones the other one? There is no Davis Hill. Davis Hill. Davis, Davis Hill, Hill. River Road. Davis Hill, River Road, um, and those have all been looked at. We've known they're on a while. Uh, the only the latter two are just getting yeah. for a bit. And Cavalry we share with um, Westport, and we did finagle them to do a, a proportional split based on per capita GDP. So usually they want 50 50. We're like, well, let's go to the statute, and we voted on that. It's, and it's, um, it's, it's just a revenue comparison, right? It's like right. what they take in a year in property tax, revenue we we'll take in. Which right. is so this is what we have. I checked with the town attorney, Ira Bloom and Doug Lamonte, and I said, hey, is this open for negotiation? I checked with BL, who is the state hires BL as, as a the DOT hires BL as an engineering firm to like assist them with this project and be the one that kind of facilitates this. And they've told us there's, they've done these with many towns and there's no negotiating. So unfortunately, I um, and I'll throw a between a rock and a hard place. There's another wrinkle to it, which is um, it's a good thing to do in general. But if we don't do it, it might jeopardize the funding for, for the current yeah. bridge projects. So. Uh, Stephanie, you did send an email just making sure we have the adequate insurance requirements. We have a new, I have a meeting actually on Monday or Tuesday with our current broker and our new broker, and I will bring this up to you. Okay, great. So looking, that was a valid point, but I mean, if they went around doing that, they'd... Are those two bridges, Jonathan, just uh, refurbishing just the ones on the soccer? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. refurbs, yeah. And again, if they have a rating system, once it gets to a certain rating system, it triggers. Because the, the, the one on Davis Hill is that terrible. No, the there's just some. Raised it because of the floods you go underneath, and there's some issues yeah, under. I've yeah, walked so under it. So, yeah, so you you know, so reinforcing some of the understructure, uh, is pro and then shoring up uh, um, the, the at the shores, riprap, whatever they need to put in there. Um, so that's it. Um, 
I do have a motion, but the motion would be to authorize the first selectman to sign the MMA with the state. The rest of the, the uh, agenda. Is Brian, got any, any any input? Any question? Okay. So. Uh, so I move to authorize the first selectman to sign a master municipal agreement with the state of Connecticut Department of Transportation as presented. Can I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Yeah, I'll, just, I'll just add that you know 14.1 and 14.3, I think it is, are, are concerning. And, but I guess if there's, uh, you know, I deal with the state from time to time in my own practice, and they hold all the cards. So yeah, uh, I guess there's not much we can do with that. No, you're right. The, I, I would like it to seem more limited, yeah. and, and it does seem very expansive and somewhat problematic that they hold all the cards, but mm -hmm. they do. Yeah. <laughs> so, and they're doing this money. So. Right. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries Aye. unanimously. Uh, Mark, would you come up here? This is uh, the annual authorization to allow bow hunting of deer on town property, my least favorite topic of the year. That said, um, it's a public health issue. It's also an issue of the health of the deer. We have an, a vigorous deer population. Um, they are the main vector for, for carrying Ehrlichia, Lyme's disease. Other Got worse. Gotten worse. Uh, deer strikes have been contained by this in terms of cars hitting. We used to have 200 like or something a We're year. Below 50. We're below 50. Um, and then in terms of the competition, you know, that you get wasting because there's just not enough. And then the other thing is too many deers attract more predators. Mm -hmm. And we already have uh, some, many of some severe uh, coyote encroaching. So I'm an animal hugger. I love all of them. Uh, this is like, this is kind of why we're here um, to make really hard decisions. This is the most unpalatable one I have to make, but I, but when I do the trade-off of the, you know, public health, I, I you know, I, I, I support the program. Um, they had, um, it was on the news, I think there's two new ticks that just moved into Connecticut. And um, now the black oh, the Asian tick, one. whatever is carrying five different diseases. The two new ticks that are coming into Connecticut are one of them has a deadly disease. Uh, I'm waiting for an update from the Board of Health. But I want to give just a little history so that the ease everybody's mind. So in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s, and even into the 80s, early 80s, you could walk around Weston. I used to, we used to raise 350. Uh, pheasants a year to train our bird hunting dogs and that was before Pheasant Hill was in place that's why Pheasant Hill is called Pheasant Hill is because we used to raise them on the Juresco property and <clears throat> so we hunted all over town so I would take my do dogs out my buddies would go out we could walk all day long and we'd come back maybe with a wood tick here or there the problem arose with the ticks really came out of control when the state of Connecticut refused to intervene early enough to cut down on the deer population and they let it bulge out of control because they had the antiquated law of well you can shoot one or two deer a year. Now because of the, the problems with the, the deer population being one of the vectors for the Texas and stuff, the, you basically on all three of your tags, so you know, if you hunt with a bow, uh, if you hunt with a shotgun or a rifle or a black dog, you can get pretty much uh, as many tags as you want, as long as you keep registering the deer. And they're in season. And that's the, that's the state's answer now to what they should have done years ago, and maybe we wouldn't have the severe tick problem that we have today, because as you know, the white-footed mouse and the, and the white-tailed deer are the ones that are the carriers to different parts of a tick's life. And so that's a, it's the Board of Health is really concerned. I know Greenwich just came out with a big program and stuff like that. Now that said, you and I have had conversations and yeah. you're, 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 you're implementing or planning on implementing some fairly stringent uh, and enforceable mechanisms to control the poaching. Because oh, yeah. the poaching is oh. not good for the real hunters. They're not good for the citizens. Uh, there have been situations where, where we get the poachers who are not abiding by the rules, they're going on private property. Um, I'll be working with the town of Westport because right on the border of Westport Weston, we took uh, off one lawn five crossbow bolts 
that were obviously shot out of the window. And this is an MO of the, the, the people that work the area. They hunt at night, they hunt with a crossbow, they usually have a truck, somebody's in the back seat, they go by, they see a deer, they shoot it, it's quiet, doesn't make any noise. Then they drop the guys off, they go to retrieve the deer and bring it back. Um, so what we find is that now we find deer laying around town that have been shot, but there's, you know, I, I bring the game wardens and we backtrack and we try to find out where the deer come from. Usually you can find a blood trail, but when they shoot them from the road, you know what I mean? There isn't any, really. So, yeah, poaching's a problem in town. I'm going to bring it to the attention of the chief and come up with a program which would involve the DEP uh, officers uh, to come in and help us with the problem. Uh, I've been doing a survey of the town, finding tree stands on different pieces of property. And um, actually, to tell you the truth, I don't have time this year, unfortunately, but I was going to come to the town and ask to have a town ordinance passed, which would require anyone hunting in the town of Weston to hand in their permission slip, a copy of their permission slip, to the uh, police department so that we would know where all the legal hunters were in town because we don't want to bother them but we want to know where people are in, in Weston as far as if there is a problem and it's near this particular piece of property. Oh, we know who's hunting over there. And we don't have extra patrols in the areas that yep. we know where the boat yep. is. We know the, the, annual the, spots. The, the thing I'm going to talk to the chief about is because it's happening at night, uh, I, I think that the chief is going to have to uh, have the guys out at night more often looking for these guys because they're doing it, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, and four o'clock in the morning, whenever they can, they're out there and these pickup trucks driving around, even sometimes earlier when the time changes. Any thought about using field cameras on known poaching spots? I'm going to set some up on a, the farm on uh, Kellogg Hill Road. You don't want to tell people what you're doing. Yeah, I'm <laughs> gonna put, they, they've already agreed uh, we're putting cameras up there because uh, we had a deer population of like 14 there that I was watching and then all of a sudden uh, the population got cut in half right. and, and so we know where they're pulling in and they've hunted that area before because we've, we've caught some of these guys multiple times before but I don't know who this new group is yet. Yeah, I got my there's a couple other spots that I'm just going to touch oh, that I've heard from some all over and citizens. Godfrey Road, the Reservoir. Birch Hill. Yeah, Birch Hill that was a bad scene over there. Yeah, and they just drive around the roads. Yeah, so. And the way they used to do it years ago was they were stupid, but that's how, that's how we caught them actually. They used to pour corn on the side of the road, so they'd drive up and then they'd see the deer there. Then they turn, they'd, if they couldn't get a shot right then, they'd turn around, and then they'd come back out. They have a red dot on their uh, crossbow, and all they have to do is put that on there, and, and that's what they were doing. So that's basically how we caught them after about 100 of my own man hours involved in tracking these guys down, but we caught them red-handed, it was a good case. Now, what I don't see here that we did have last year that we need to clarify um, are the specific locations we're coming. Have. Okay, so we're gonna, we don't wanna add that to the motion, yeah. so. What are the locations, Mark, there are? All right, so the landfill, uh, that's 50 plus acres. Um, La Shot is the backfield, that's nine and a half acres, however, I'm not planning on doing any hunting there until the Lashak gets done with their October Fest and all their other things. Usually by the, uh, November they're done up there with using that as a parking lot. The Moore property is 38 acres. Um, the strassler Thompson property is 80 acres. Uh, and the Sagley Park, again, I went back in there and on the northwest side of the Sagley, nowhere near any of the playing fields or the pond or any of the hiking trails on the other side of the west branch of the Sawcrook River. There's a pretty good section of wood there, as well as uh, Evil Galleon, I think, has a little um, preserve up there, so it's added to the space. And so I noticed that the population there was increased too, and they were uh, mostly does and fawns. So that's basically what we're trying to, it's called, it's called a does, which are the breeding machines, you know. So that would be the pieces of property, and then my plan is that there's a couple of guys I've been using for years, but we've been problem after problem every year with uh, people coming in and vandalizing our stands, people going in and uh, using town property for purposes other than they're supposed to be used, 
illegally, and so they kind of slowed us down. But I think that I have all of those problems solved now. So hopefully this year we're going to be able to make an impact on the deer population in these areas. They're going to report to me every time they have a, a harvest an animal. We're going to keep track of the uh, is a male, female. Try to get an estimated weight on it. Um, and that will then help me guide myself next year as to what direction we're going. They're also going to keep track of how many deer they see a day. So in other words, when they're in there uh, hunting, maybe they don't even shoot a deer, but they were there and they saw five deer, or they saw three deer, or they saw ten deer, or whatever. So they're going to have the reporting, a reporting system to me this year to tell me what they're seeing in there. So those are the pieces that I propose, and those are the ones we've used in the past, and I, that's the ones I propose that we hung up. Okay. And it's bow and arrow only, and it'll be monitored by myself, and uh, naturally if there's anything illegal going on, these guys will also come to me so that I can go to the DEP or the local police and maybe we can grab some of these guys that are sneaking on the town property illegally. We've done it in the past, we'll do it again. Okay. I know, I know we've got to go. Um, Sorry, I said a quick question. What's the process to get approval? Okay, uh, uh, there's a state form permission slip. And I don't know, Chris, if you need to sign it or Jonathan as the town administrator, you need to sign it. But everybody that has to come down here to the town hall and meet either yourself or Jonathan or both, I don't care. And then they'll have their permits filled out and then you sign the permit and then I will designate which you'll, piece of property they're on. And you'll vet the form before? Yes, it's all state form. Sorry to interrupt, Stephen. You vet the, uh, the what? You'll vet the, the person that wants an application. Yeah, you have to be permitted. The hunt, all yeah. hunters have to be registered. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you were <laughs> going to have a question? Yeah, uh, a few of them, I guess. So this is not an open um, licensing program. No, 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 no. I'm just going to make a there's some guys that have been using for years that are professional bow hunters, and then there's some guys who have made phone calls to me that are at local, actually Western residents, which is fine. And then also, if I've tried to hook up with some of the police officers, but they have some of their own properties that they hunt, so uh, I'm keeping it to anybody that, and they have to come to me, they have to show me their, uh, you know, their hunting licenses. That, you know, I, I kind of do a little short interview to see who they are. Um, I don't find it necessary uh, to do a background check on them because um, if they still have their hunting license, they haven't committed any violations because if they had, their license would be yanked by the state. The, um, so then how many, how many uh, of these permission slips do you think will be? I, I don't know that exact number yet, Stefan, because I'm looking at the pieces and now I have to go through and it, it's very difficult when all the leaves are on the trees, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've gone through and looked at the, all the deer sign and the deer that I've seen in there, but it's hard on a piece of property, even a, a nine and a half acre, that's one guy, okay, that's, that, that's it. But on a 50 acre piece, I can fit in usually two or three guys that are distant and apart from each other. And then they, they that would be the 80 acre piece of property. I could probably fit in more guys. The problem with the Strasser piece of property, as you know, it's a long, narrow piece, and I have to be able to stagger the guys out in their locations. Yeah, there's two directions to right, for so that they're staggered. And and, and I uh, the town is because we do not charge uh, a fee to hunt on the property. We by state law are exempt from all liability. So if a guy climbs his tree stand, falls out, breaks his neck, it's by state law, state statute, the town is not liable, or any private property owner is not liable, as long as they don't charge a fee. Probably wise. <laughs> yeah. Um, and how many, what, what, what's the season? What are, what, the season has already started, Stefan. It started uh, September 15th. Um, we need that in the motion, too. To yeah, it, and so I, I would um, propose that what we do now is we, uh, Randy has a list of all the property owners around these properties. We have to send out letters to all of them to notify them that we will be hunting on the prop town property. And then after we get the letters back and answer any of the So what's, what's opening and closing date? Because we want to the motion. We did oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so we're going to authorize it hunting on these specific properties from these specific gotcha. dates. Gotcha. Just 
subject to. We could just you know, say subject to the one. state. We could just say subject to the state season. <laughs> I would say, Randy's got a mail. Uh, let's do the sixth of October. Is that all right? Till when? So this is oh, it, the season goes through the end of January. Right. Till Jan thirty one. Yeah. Or how many, I know this is a more or less a guesstimate at this point, but how many deer do you think do we have? Hundreds. Per, per acre. I don't know that exact number, because you know what's going on, Stefan? These deer. Hey, hey guys, I'm sorry to interrupt. I know we've got a lot to cover. I just have a hard stop at 1130. I have to hang up at 1130. Okay. I don't want to rush this, but I'm just telling you. <laughs> Jump You'll get him the deer number. <laughs> I'll get you the deer number. I, you know, yeah, and I, I have a few more questions, questions. I, 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 and, I, I and I guess I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit leery of doing this on a Friday morning with, with very little notice. Of public it is a, uh, it is a sensitive issue, I think, for a lot of people. We've never had, had a never had a commenter problem, at least yeah, that, that, yeah, we've, to, we've done. To it my knowledge, it might be years. a sensitive issue. So I think if, if Brian's got to have a hard stuff, I, I you want I a table myself. We could t pick it up next Thursday night. We'll pick it up next possible. Thursday night. Thursday night? When is it? The fourth? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. We're tabling. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Okay. But you have the information, so. Stefan, if you could send the questions to me and Mark in the meantime. Yeah. So yeah. So we can get the answers. Yeah. Thanks, Stefan. And I'll try to get those numbers together. All right. Really, thank Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank okay. You. So I'm going to move quickly on this last one, and we could talk about it. But basically, um, LOTSIP, which is a grant that's run by the COG, unlike the last grant we got for sidewalks, has reopened. We had planned on submitting it before, but then with the budget stuff that happened, they closed it down. But we did have a plan to extend the sidewalk plan further going up Lord's Highway, wrapping around the edge of Revson Field where the kids are walking, and extending it here up to the uh, Northfield Church as well, as well as putting in LED lighting and things like that. Um, we have a very good chance. We've never gotten any money from the lots of program from West Hog. They had indicated in the past that we had a very high probability of getting some approval, depending on what we asked for. Uh, the deadline is October 31 to, to actually go forward. In order to do that, we're going to ask for a little bit more money to basically extend the sidewalk plan to augment what we have. There's 21 million plus another 4 million that's going to somewhere in the COG. You know, we might as well reach out for some of this. So, so what we're asking for is uh, some money to hire a consultant to help us draft uh, the next um, the next application. So, yeah, so this is money we, we've received a huge grant already from the state. This is, this is um, small compared uh, to if you. I mean, yeah. I mean, we 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 received a nice grant, but there's 21 million for the for the West Cog towns, and you know we've never gotten any of it. So it's always going to Stamford and Westport and Margaret will tell you, the big cities always get it. So they kind of want to give it to us. They want to spread it out to small towns. The other thing I'll say is that my understanding from talking to people is that the criteria for getting it approved is going to be, is it shovel ready as opposed to anything else? So it's not so much how much you're asking for, it's is your plan ready to go ahead and move? So we would like it ready to go ahead and move because it'll exponentially uh, increase our, our likelihood of getting it approved and it was something we intended to do before um, it is a natural extension of and still covering you know the safety parameters of what we were looking at and it's five thousand dollars it's essentially to make it's it it, ready. it's a max yeah so we're, we're but it's the purpose is to make it shovel ready to well, that's all yeah plans and make a good application well the, the, I think we'll, it's going to help us do the schematic design get a uh, have a schematic map of where they'll go and have a, the most important thing is an up-to-date construction estimate, which is gonna be from a certified engineer who's doing these projects all over the state. They're also gonna come and say, mm, let's do, let's drive around. What are we gonna to need to do here based on the topography? And, you know, so that's, it's not just gonna be a paper exercise. It's gonna be really a, a visit the site and investigate. And that's what we did last time. And what I heard from the DOT was we were number one in our application in terms of need. And of course, a lot of that has to do with the fact that we don't have any sidewalks. But you know, they did a good job. They did, you know, they, they did a good job. So I'm going to go back to that company or another one, and, and maybe up to. I don't think it's going to be more than five thousand dollars. Certainly, there was a great return on investment the last time this was approved. Yeah, we're thinking of going. One if we and a half. do get this grant, this lots of grant, we will then have to, just like with the other sidewalk grant, pay for the design. Which would probably be 
we, if we, especially if we can manage the time and to fold them both in, there would be some substantial savings yeah. in that. But. Right. So. All right, that sounds okay. like a good idea to me. Brian, any thoughts? No, I think it's fine. I read it all. Okay. Uh, I hereby move that a supplemental appropriation of up to five thousand dollars for engineering services associated with state grant application for the establishment of sidewalks in town be approved. Can I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Thank Jonathan. Thank you for all the work you did on the first one. We actually know how to do it now, and we have a really good shot. So, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second, please. Second. And no discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Bob. Aye.